Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for my introduction. Um, I guess, according to all our body clocks, you should all be really on it now. If we look at the time, it's quarter to 12, your circadian rhythm should be pumping out all the cortisol, um, so you'll really take all of this in. So my role here is to talk a little bit about how light actually affects us. How do we know what's good light, what's bad light? How do we design with that in mind, now knowing what we know about light improvements with LED and what, it, what effects it can have on us? So I think probably the best place to start is by talking about that. I mean, light is very difficult to grasp. It's not a tangible thing. So most people find it really difficult to assess what is good light and what is poor light. How can we gauge what good lighting is? Well, we judge it by how we feel. We know that if we go into a space, whether it's um, a restaurant, say, we know what makes us feel relaxed. We know what makes us feel really alive. Um, but what we find difficult is to, to actually find that balance in our own lives in a domestic setting and also we haven't really had the tools or the knowledge to be able to use light to positively impact our health. We use light traditionally because we need to see that. We need to have light to do our tasks, we need to have light to work, we need to have what we feel is the right light to relax in. But how do we actually do this? So what I'm finding now now that we have the advent of LED, and most people feel that LED is a sort of mysterious thing, and nobody can really get to grips with, with what this means for the lighting industry, but it's given us a new tool to use, and it means that clients are becoming more aware of what it can do, and they're asking for not just a lighting design to make their workplace look great. I mean, you only have to come into home house and you instantly get the vibe. It's all very shuji and low lighting and it's very kind of country house interior, but also quite slick, but you're not going to feel very enlivened with this type of lighting. So we know that what we feel, we can affect using light. We know that we can affect our emotions. We can feel happier, we can feel sad. When I'm lighting a restaurant, I can make people eat faster can make people eat slow. So the client says to me, we're gonna have, we really want to be able to turn tables in this restaurant. You know, for profitability, I need 300 covers at least per lunchtime. So I can change the lighting. I can usually do that either by changing the color of the light or I can use the control. And it really does have an effect. You go shopping. I can make you turn left or right when you walk into a shop. You don't necessarily know that. There are other visual signals, other cues, such as layout, floor color, etc. But lighting has one of the largest impacts. We just didn't realize it. So clients are asking that I light a place to make it look beautiful, but I also take care to make sure that people working in those environments feel good about working in the environment, have better concentration, and that it has a positive impact on their health and well-being. So we can stimulate our circadian system, although right now probably need a little bit more daylight. I don't know if, if you felt this morning when you woke up, the weather was really weird. It's kind of a flat gray light, which is not unusual for London, but at this time of year with the warmth, it just felt really strange. That's something we can feel. So we know we can feel stuff. We can feel that emotion. How do we reverse this 90% of our time that we spend indoors? We do. When you think about what you do, you're never outside. And the major impact comes from the amount of light, as Peter said, going into your retinas, going into the right part, into the visual receptors in your eyes, not just now for five minutes, but what happened to you for the three hours before you came and the three hours after you left. All of that cumulatively will decide whether you sleep really well tonight in the pitch black, and how you're going to feel tomorrow, where your concentration level is. Now, most of you will know that this is our Kelvin scale. This is how we measure the temperature of light in Kelvin. Okay, that doesn't mean that this is touch temperature, this is just color temperature. White light is made up of red, green, 
blue. So here we have this lovely melange. Now, running through this line with something called the Planckian locus, you don't really need to worry about remembering that bit. But essentially what this black line indicates, that is the colour of white light. We know that white light, well, we've got white light outside. We've also got white light in here. This is white light. It's all white. It's just different colours of white. So we've got a very bluish white light here. And obviously we've got a very red, orangey colour white light here. And if you can pick what you use, you can usually say that I feel really mellow at this temperature. And around about the 2700, this is the kind of light that I want to put into people's homes because it helps us to communicate, helps us to make us feel well. So we now know that the intensity of light is important, how much light gets into our eyes, essentially. Um, when, it, when we get that light, as I said, it's not just all about standing in front of a light box for five minutes, it's about what comes before and what comes after. The human brain da -da -da, loves, those, the, loves blue light. Blue light has the most impact, the maximum impact. It's the thing that will provide more oomph to your hormones than anything else. So that's going to make you run, it's going to make you uh, energetic, it can affect your cortisol. So I'd like to introduce you to Bob. Bob is a big believer in his circadian rhythm and this is what Bob does, generally speaking, during the day when he's paying attention to the type of light in the space that he lives. So you can see Bob is asleep with, generally speaking, I would put him in the dark, in the pitch black, in that situation. But embers and candlelight will make you feel sleepy. You can see Bob chilling out at around about 2,700 Kelvin. So this is Bob socialising. And then if you really want to feel energetic, perhaps if you're going to run a marathon, this is the kind, you want a really bright blue sunny day. Think about how you felt yesterday. It was such a beautiful day. Sunday was such a beautiful day. How did you feel when you were outside on that day? <coughs> it's not just because the sky is blue. We, this is, we think that because that's what we see, that's what makes us feel good. But actually it's the quality of the light. It's that non-visual light that makes us feel different. And you'll get your most focus. If you want to sit an exam, if you want to write a report, if you want to have a really productive meeting, you want to be looking at this level. So you can take the right light, the right type of light source, you've got to put it in the right place, but you've also got to control it because obviously you don't want that same colour of light all day long. What happens if you've got, say, a big office space in an office block and you've got daylight coming in on one side? How then do you balance this fantastic thing that you can introduce this light level to make everybody feel better? You use control to balance out the amount of light coming from daylight because if you can use a control system where you can input latitude, time, day, month, yeah, everybody, you know, what we feel here today is going to be very different to what they're feeling in Australia at the same time. So you need to be able to use that control to make the product suit the space in which it's in. So essentially, it's asking everybody just to remember how important it is that light, how important light can be, how important light is to our well-being. Everybody would actually like to see what they're doing, but if you could use light to really improve your mental health, so that our life of mobile phones and screens and laptops and being indoors for 90% of the time, how can we help reverse that? Well, we can use that light to positively affect our body clocks. Why wouldn't we? We can use that LED light source, which can give us those high lux levels, which will make us feel better. We can use that control to fine tune it to the environment of which it's in. And also, it's still really important to remember that we don't want just blanket light in a space. We want to have depth and texture because we're human beings, we're emotional things, and lighting will affect 
how we feel. Thank you very much. <laughs>